The new special counsel, Jack Smith, is a former acting U.S. attorney who said the investigations would not pause or flag under his watch. We're going to have more on him in just a moment. Let's get right to CNN senior legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed. What else, Paula, did Attorney General Merrick Garland say about appointing this special counsel? Well, John, we knew this was something under consideration within the Justice Department. And during that speech, he pointed to the extraordinary nature of these cases and said in order to protect the independence of the Justice Department, he had to make this move. Now, it was also notable that he said he's not going to be overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the special counsel. Now, under the regulations, if there are any charges that the special counsel wants to bring, those are subject to the approval of the attorney general. But it's interesting. He wants to really establish that this is going to be an independent entity that is going to be operating separate from the Justice Department, except for the the particular instances where they may be required to check in with the attorney general. But it's unclear, John, if this is really going to satisfy critics and anyone who wants to claim that this is partisan. Now, the former president's uh, spokesman has already said today that this is, quote, a political stunt. They, they would I would expect nothing less. Tell us more about Jack Smith, all of a sudden sort of the world's most interesting man. Yeah, when I was making calls to sources today on the former president's legal team, I got a lot of, wait, who? Uh, and then I sent, uh, sent the biography. I haven't gotten too many reactions yet, but it's interesting to look at his biography. This is someone who's been a long time a prosecutor, worked in various offices for the Justice Department across the country also led the division of the Justice Department that focuses and specializes in prosecuting public officials who are accused of corruption. And he was most recently chief prosecutor at the Special Court of The Hague. And we know from sources that they considered many different people for this potential assignment. They were looking for someone that they thought could ultimately withstand partisan critiques. And John, of course, we know those are coming. What else have you learned, Paula, about the special counsel's team and sort of the base of operations. So we know that they're not going to be operating within the Justice Department. We saw that with special counsel Robert Mueller, he had se separate offices that, of course, CNN was staking out, and then also John Durham. They, they don't operate inside main justice or inside buildings where there are other Justice Department officials uh, doing their work. He will, though, be overseeing many of the same people that are working on this investigation. This is something that's been underway for quite some time. Now, they will also have their own budget. There's really no limit on that. That is, though, interestingly, that is one of the few things that they have to go through Congress for. Otherwise, Congress is not allowed to get the details of the special counsel's work. So interestingly, this really does kind of insulate the Justice Department and Garland from congressional oversight on these two highly controversial probes. Yeah, that is a very significant change between yesterday and today, and also potentially pertinent given Republican control of the House. Paula Reed, thank you so much for your reporting. More now on the reaction by the former president. I'm joined by CNN's Kristen Holmes. Kristen, what is the former president saying about all this? Well, John, no surprise, the former president is lashing out at the Justice Department. And one thing to pay attention to is that we have learned that former President Trump was angry even before the actual appointment of a special counsel, that just the prospect of it was something that had been daunting for him, that he reminded him of Robert Mueller, and he thought this would just draw out those investigations. And he was angry, it continued. In an interview that he did after that announcement, he said, I have been proven innocent for six years on everything from fake impeachments to Mueller, who found no collusion. Illusion, and now I have to do it more. The, it is not acceptable. It is so unfair. The worst politicization of justice. The Republican Party has to stand up and fight. And that last line I do want to point to here because this is coming at a time when we know that there have been a number of Republicans who have said it's time to move on from Trump. Many saying that he has too much baggage and some of these legal battles are what they are talking about when it comes to that baggage. And in the past, some of them had some of these kind of incidents, including the search of Mar-a-Lago, have galvanized Republicans. But it's really unclear if that's going to happen this time around, John. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. It is a new dynamic. I also understand that, that the former president is planning to talk more about this maybe tonight. What have you learned about that? That's right. So he took to Truth Social and said that he would be making a statement at Mar-a-Lago at 8.30. And I have to tell you, I made a number of calls to members of his inner circle who were surprised to learn from me that he would be making this announcement. There was a last-minute scramble, many advisors essentially telling him not to make this announcement, not to have any kind of statement here. They did not think that it was thought through, given that it came just hours before he put it on True Social, and there was no plan there for that. And one uh, source in particular who was familiar with his thinking, saying that it was likely to be more of a rant than an actual statement. Of course, we'll be keeping an eye on that for you.
All right, Kristen Holmes, thank you very much. And I should let everyone know we will keep an eye on it and we will let you all know if it makes actual news. Perspective now from CNN senior law enforcement analyst Andrew McCabe, a former deputy director of the FBI. Uh, director, you've got some pretty unique experience in these types of matters. So how necessary here was the appointment of a special counsel to address even the appearance of a conflict of interest? Yeah, so to be clear, John, um, first of all, these are very, very hard decisions, issues of first impression, totally unique circumstances. I know what that feels like. I've been in this chair. Um, this case is not clear in one direction or the other. It's a very close call. Um, under the circumstances, I think the department did the right thing, leaning in toward, towards the direction of trying to do everything they can to avoid even the appearance of a conflict of interest. Now, you could argue, well, this could cause excessive delay on the prosecution, slow things down, maybe even make it harder to make that indictment or no indictment decision later on. Uh, but I think they're doing the right thing to put the investigation on the strongest possible footing early on. What does it tell you maybe about where investigators are? Maybe nearly done or is this just the beginning of a new phase? It's hard to it's hard to say with with specificity, but I but I will say, you know, you don't typically consider and go through the go through the um, the stress and the notoriety of pointing a special counsel over an investigation that you think is not going anywhere. So I think you can safely assume that the department believes that they are coming up to an indict or no indict decision. Um, there is no question that this investigation, certainly the Mar-a-Lago investigation and more broadly the January 6th investigation, is heading to that very controversial point. Um, and you can assume also that the attorney general thinks it's beneficial to have an independent special counsel make a recommendation as to that uh, decision. Of course, the final decision is in the AG's hands. What's your take on Jack Smith's resume, the kind of person you'd want heading up an investigation like this? You know, I like the fact that we don't know much about Jack Smith. He's a guy that seems to have pursued his career and his prosecutions in a very quiet, uh, lawyerly, professional way. There doesn't appear to be any um, obvious lean in one political direction or another. I think that's, uh, that's much to his credit. So he seems like an entirely legit candidate for this role. I will say that that reputation of independence and uh, apolitical nature is not going to insulate him from a withering series of partisan attacks. Um, you know, those are coming. The, the days when you can put in a special counsel to avoid all that are far behind us. Uh, the one advantage here is that he'll be on the receiving end of those attacks, less so the department and the FBI, and that's a good thing for those institutions long term. So the DOJ investigation, it seemed to have gone quiet, at least as far as we could tell, or at least we were hearing up to the midterms. There was the expectation they might amp up again now that the midterms are over. What kind of deliberations do you think were happening behind the scenes that maybe led to the special counsel appointment? There's absolutely no question that those investigators and prosecutors who are working hard during that entire quiet period, you know, it actually gives them an opportunity to step back from any of the uh, more visible, overt actions that they would normally be pursuing and really go deep on the evidence that they have, making connections, identifying other potential witnesses, getting their subpoenas in, a, you know, all their ducks in a row to unleash new subpoenas, bring in new witnesses, bring people, uh, uh, new folks into the grand jury. It seems like they've done that as they've issued new subpoenas just this week. Um, so you can assure, you know, be assured they haven't lost any ground, even though we haven't seen what they've been doing. And McCabe, as I said, if anyone knows what it's like, to be in this kind of moment, it's you. Appreciate you being with us tonight.